Welcome, everyone, and welcome again to Social Flight Live. I'm Jeff Simon. We have a fantastic show for you this evening. Brian Turner is here from Just Plain Silly. I'd like to welcome all of his fans here to the show, and thank you so much for taking time out of your evening. It's going to be a great, great evening. Uh, before we get started, just a few housekeeping tips on our end. First of all, tonight's broadcast will be recorded and will be available on YouTube, on Social Flight's YouTube channel uh, over uh, afterwards. Just do one search. Uh, it usually takes us about a day to get that on, and that is just Social Flight dot com uh, just search for social flight on YouTube or you can get it within the social flight mobile app and at socialflight.com and of course with that I would like to remind everyone we created social flight to support general aviation that is the sole reason that it exists it is here because if we can present all of you with all of the wonderful things happening in-person events online events like we have tonight as well as tens of thousands of destinations hundred dollar hamburgers and other reasons to fly then hopefully you will fly more General aviation will be supported, and that's what we are all here for. So be sure to check that out. It is all completely free. And in addition to that, we really, really like to give things away. Um, if you can send your stories in, uh, along with pictures or anything like that, about just, just flying, just something you're doing to support general aviation, improving your plane, getting a new rating, anything that supports your local FBO, anyone in the business that is, makes their living uh, in general aviation. Uh, it just thrills us here, uh, and hopefully you might be saving someone's job. So send any of those stories or pictures to info, I-N-F-O, at socialflight.com. We're getting them all together. We're going to choose one of them, and you are going to win your own pair of Flying Eyes eyewear. You get to pick from their website, whatever it is that you want for your pair of glasses, they will custom make them and get them out to you. We already did this once and had a, a winner recently, so be sure to do that. That'll be fun. Um, we love to give things away, and so the other thing is, if you have the Social Flight mobile app, all you have to do is fly, check in. It gives you points everywhere that you check in just by landing. It's all automatic, super easy, completely free, and we're giving away a uh, Lightspeed Zulu 3 headset. That's coming up. I think that one is uh, May 1st that we're giving that away. Um, and we just keep giving away and giving away things as part of the Fly to Win Challenge. We recently just gave away a whole maintenance kit from Tempest with spark plugs and, and air, a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, you name it, it's happened there. And uh, with that, you can also see some more updates and we're going to continue building this airplane we're building in our house, this Mustang. So with that, the reason we are all here tonight, of course, is to meet with Brian Turner, Just Plain Silly on YouTube. If you are not already a fan of Brian Turner's YouTube channel, Just Plain Silly, then you certainly will be after this show. Um, Brian's one of the funniest personalities in general aviation with his unique no-holes-barred approach. It's a, it's a wonderful blend of subtle satire and outright slapstick humor. He somehow manages to be self-effacing uh, while at the same time including an email address which includes the phrase, world's greatest pilot. Um, and if you can reconcile those two things, then welcome to the fan club and welcome Brian Turner. Let me bring him on the line right now. There we go. Hey, how are you doing, doing, Brian? I I was doing good until you committed to doing a fantastic show. I don't know what you've got up your sleeve. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> hey, at this point in time, with some of the stuff that you do online, I feel like I could just turn it over and uh, and and do it right there. And you know, I should have shown people right up front here. If 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 you want to know the the picture that absolutely like completely epitomizes everything that you're about. It's this shot. And I love that you had to write a satire on it because um, we'll talk a little bit later on, but people seem to, to, to have a hard time with that. Some people definitely do. Uh, it's definitely interesting. I, I installed the social flight app and it just alerted me that I'm on, so I can't wait to see what I do. <laughs> this is awesome. How are you doing, man? Uh, excellent. Thank you so much. And I would also like to tell everybody there is a Q&A feature built into uh, tonight's broadcast uh, software. So if you want to post a question there, uh, if it's a good question, then it might fit. If we might find a way of fitting it into the show. And if it's a bad one, we'll send it to uh, Brian to turn into a video. 
So yeah, um, yeah dude, I'm running, I'm running low on content. <laughs> So Brian, um, I want to get started as always, you know, the show's dedicated to, to personalities and people that inspire other people in general aviation. You are big time one of those. Can you tell us your story? Like what, what got you up to the point that you started making these videos? How, what was your aviation story? Ah, uh, well, so it's, it was unintentional. Um, I, I used to fly a TV nine. My father and I shared this plane, a little cicada. And I was fairly engaged in, in flying forums and um, I bought, well, I didn't buy, my dad bought a Cirrus. And so I was like, hey, I, I got a Cirrus. And like very quickly, I started learning the Cirrus pilots were the worst pilots in aviation. And <laughs> I was like, man, this got rough quick. Um, I didn't change. Um, and so it, it got literally the things I, I was hearing was like, oh, you, you can't land a plane without a parachute. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, I've never once used it. Like I, I, I assume it's in there. <laughs> Uh, and so um, I used to, to write on flying forms. Just I've always been someone who I enjoy writing satire. And uh, so I, I kind of established myself a little bit on this one forum as, as someone who was always writing stories. And I would take the people from the forum and make them actors in the stories. And, and I, 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 I gotten a lot of the, I guess, flack for flying the series. And I was like, one day I was flying. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make a video showing just the absurdity that you can land this plane and reuse it and just all the everything that what would a serious pilot do and so i made this video and I, the intent was to share it on this forum i didn't even have a, like a youtube i had a channel where i just like with my kids and stuff just where i uploaded videos and uh, so i put it up there and I, I put it on the forum and i was very naive about social media and stuff i just hadn't really thought about it. i didn't know youtuber was a thing um and so i started getting people going hey this thing's traveling and uh the it, it got a lot of views really quick and then I was like, okay, well, I'll do another one. So I made one pre-flighting series and it did really, really well. And I was like, man, this is easy. And like <laughs> for two years, like those videos were like 70, 80,000 views. Everything else is like 1500. I'm like, what? Well, I kind of enjoyed that. Um, and it's, it's, so it really was unintentional. Um, but it's, um, it's, it's a lot of fun. And I like, I like, I like, I really like to write, but it's really hard to get writing in front of people. And so this was like, okay, well, I can take these things I write. I don't necessarily like being in front of camera all that much. Uh, full transparency, I'm a little uncomfortable, but I, I fake it. Um, but it's a way for me to write and then get it to people because people really like watching videos. And so I started going, okay, let me go look at all these things I've written down that I find funny and see if I can turn it into a video. And now it's just sort of my, I don't know, my, my path to get my, my stuff out to people and it's, it's working. So um, I, I don't, I don't like the editing. I'm not crazy about uh, being on the camera, but I really like coming up with a creative idea and then seeing it. So uh, it was an unintentional path, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty good way to have an unintentional path to fame yeah. and, uh, and, and having everyone, you know, giving back so much and, and, and putting, brightening people's days, especially God with everything that the world's been through, that our community has been through to be able to laugh is is a precious precious commodity yeah and it's um it's one there's so many there's so many benefits you know i i now know how easy i got it because I, I see i see a lot of people they get their plane they get their gopros and they're trying to start a channel and i'm like they have no idea what's ahead of them because those if those first two videos hadn't been successful i would I, I wouldn't put in work there's no you know um but now it's like when when someone you know comes up to me at oshkosh and says hey you brighten my day or i put a video out and people i I, I kid you not to put a video out like the first 10 comments would be like, I've had such a terrible Saturday. I needed this. And I'm like, man, that to be able to give something to somebody when I really don't have anything to give other than just maybe I can make you laugh. That feels really good. So to yeah. be able to, to do that is probably more, more important than, you know, making a career or job out of being a YouTuber or something, but have, having someone go, man, this, this really brightened my day. I'm like, man, that's powerful to me. Yeah. No kidding. I, I, I get that. Um, I, I'd love to hear. Let's go back, though. Um, I want to I'm going to share a picture here and um, I want to <laughs> take, take you through a little bit of like learning to fly. So this was your first plane. Mm -hmm. That's a Cicada TB9. A fantastic airplane if you don't want to carry much or go too fast. Um, the landing gear is just so robust, like you, it's just designed to hit the ground hard with a ham fisted student at the controls. Like it's a <laughs> fantastic. It's goofy looking um so massive like conversation starter and it's a low wing with two doors so it's uh it, it is a fantastic trainer um they've got the tv 10 tobago and the trinidad for the 
you know, the, the get their planes, but fantastic airplane. I absolutely loved it. They're really, really unique. How did you, how did you come on? Like, well, first of all, take me back. How do you get your license? Um, I always wanted to be a pilot and, um, kept going to flight schools and going, how much does it cost to learn to fly? And they're like, $20,000. I was like, I don't have that. Um, and then, so my, my wife knew I wanted to fly until she got me a discovery flight. And I remember going into that, having never flown a small plane before going, I want to do this so bad. I'm terrified to take this flight because if I'm scared or I hate it, all that, your know, childhood, how cool would it be to fly a plane was just gone. So I, I took the discovery flight and then it was like, come hell or high water, I'm doing this. And so I got on Craigslist and Google uh, flight training and I found a guy who, who was the cheapest flight instructor I could find and a uh, fantastic, perfect instructor for me. He was uh -huh. all about having fun. He said, if we're not having fun, we're going to stop doing this. So he's like, bring your camera. If you want to take photos, bring your, you know, if you want to do videos, he's like, if you get stressed out, you just want to look out the window, I'll take over. So it was like, he was like, we are here to have fun together. This is not going to be, this isn't to be difficult or challenging. He's like, that's coming. Um, and so I got eased into like, man, like almost like here's a friend saying, let's go fly together. We'll figure out the flying, the knowledge stuff later. And so it was perfect for me. And so my dad was a pilot when I was a kid and a uh, blue single engine. And he, he gave it up um, a long time ago. And so I told him, I said, hey, dad, I'm, I'm going to go take some, some flight lessons. He was like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then when I came home with the, the back of my shirt, um, I think he was like, crap, he was either one of two things, either it's like, crap, my son's going to go buy some duct tape together 152, get himself killed, or this is my ticket to let my wife know that I need to start flying again with my son. So um, right about the time I soloed, he said, okay, I'm going to get recurrent, we're going to get a plane. And so he found this plane. And so me and my dad, um, my, hands down, my favorite person to fly with, he and I, I joke that we fly like an old couple drives, neither of us know how the other one gets it done without us in the plane to correct them constantly. <laughs> um, but so he found, he found this plane and he and I both got current and, and, and learned to fly in this plane together. And then he, he got a little, what happens if something happens to me and mom's in the plane. So he, he started looking at, you know, the Cirrus cause it, it has the, the cap system. And uh, quickly it became like anything I contribute to a Cirrus is a drop in the bucket. Like I'm making no impact on it and I don't want to just be, flying around dad's plane, putting hours on it. So I said, yeah, so we got this, this Cirrus. Um, that is John Travolta's next door neighbor. He, uh, dad found the Cirrus and um, he said, we're gonna grab a Cirrus instructor. We're gonna fly to Florida and pick this thing up. I'd never been to Jumbo Air in Ocala, Florida. And as we're pulling into what we expected to be a little air park, my dad goes, what is that jet doing there? I go, Dad, I go, I know where we are. And I pulled up that satellite picture they always show of Travolta's house with the 707. And I'm yep. like, oh, my God. So so we, um, this this guy was his next-door neighbor, and uh, we didn't get to see John. We got to see some of his you know, staff working around the planes and, and the, the yards at his house or whatever. But uh, he and he and this guy were buds. But, yeah, so we, we got that plane. Um, they're, they're fantastic airplanes, and I think the reputation has gotten a lot better. They're, they're, they initially weren't didn't have the best safety record because pilots were appreh apprehensive about using the chute and, and you had some people diving in too quick on a Cirrus without training. But now you can, you can go buy a used Cirrus today and Cirrus will pay for your transition training. Like they're, they're so committed to safety and all that. Mm. So it's, it's, it's really a fantastic plane. Um, but um, I, I, I am too old to be just flying around and getting hundred dollar hamburgers, putting hours on my dad's uh, sky Lamborghini. And so yeah. I, I decided I needed to, we use that for the family and long cross country missions. But then I found this right here, which is uh, the most beautiful plane I'll ever own. And, and what's funny, as I'm looking at this picture, I didn't realize it when I sent it to you. Um, I was making fun of the ads B install. So on the nose cone there, I've superimposed um, the dyno. <laughs> <laughs> the UAV onyx tail beacon on the nose. Yes. That was for, a, I, I photoshopped that on there for Instagram post. I didn't even realize that. I sent you the doctored photo, so there you go. <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> that. That's my primary $100 hamburger plane right now, and it's uh, it's taking me to Oshkosh, and it's going to take me to Oshkosh this year, hopefully. It's a, it's a, There's so much fun. Absolutely just a, a, a blast to fly, especially in Texas. You fly with the canopy open. It, it's just, just an awesome plane. 
Yeah, and I mean, I, I, we were talking about this before. I mean, I we my family grew up with uh, a Grumman. That's what my boys grew up in the back of since they were three months old. I used to be technical director of the uh, AWA, the Grumman Owners Association, and I love those planes to death. They are they're wonderful, and um, when you do have to 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 graduate up to to something, if you're, when your family grows up and the weight just becomes a problem and the space becomes a problem and you have to move to something else. No, oh, it, it still hurts. It still hurts to go back to, to not do that. So may, maybe you want to just like find some way of tucking it into a hangar and being a barn find um, for somewhere in the future uh, for, um, um, you know, something else to happen or, uh, or me to get from you. Anyway, <laughs> If I could find a way to keep it and upgrade, I would. I, 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 I do have plans of, of putting a little for sale flag on it at Oshkosh this year. And uh, that's going to be, I will never own a plane as pretty as that plane. It's just absolutely a beautiful plane and it's so fun to fly, but it's not designed to carry a family of four with a 13 year old kid that, you know, yep. the, the, like, and the problem is those, those kids keep getting the 13 this year, next year, you don't know, maybe they're going to be 14. Like it keeps, it just keeps going. I know. And so, yeah, I'm looking at, I'm like every every plane I look at now, I'm like, what's the useful load? Yeah. <laughs> Will it carry my son? How big is he going to be in four more years? <laughs> uh, so anyway, if anyone missed that, I want to be really clear that uh, Brian just said his plane is going to be parked at Oshkosh with a for sale sign on it. So if you didn't have a reason to go to AirVenture before, um, <laughs> Just don't, you know, my advice to everybody is don't be too, like, gloating if you decide you're the one who wants to buy the plane. And if, right. you, if you buy it and you live in North Texas and you let me fly it every once in a while, um, that'd, be, that'd be cool. Ooh, that's a great idea. I like that, you know, yeah. a little flyback, buyback agreement, something like that. Yeah, you can have it until my kids go off to college and then I'm going to buy it back. Oh, kind of like a lease deal. I like that. Here's a, uh, here's a version of... Uh, uh, without uh, uh, without the uh, nose beacon. <laughs> yeah, this was the first time we introduced the two planes to each other, um, and they had to figure out kind of which one was Alpha, but they, they've got to sort it sorted out now. Yeah. Uh, so this was the Cirrus and back and the Grumman. Um, this is a, I forget why I flew over there. My dad flew his plane over there, and I was like, I just want to get a picture of our two planes next to each other. So I flew over to this airfield to get this photo, and uh, that was cool. And then, we, <laughs> you know, we both took off at the same time, and dad was gone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! All right. Well, we have to obviously get, get to talking about your videos. I mean, oh, yeah. the, you, you've taken um, this wonderful, hilarious approach to uh, mundane, ordinary stuff that uh, that people do, and and this this is probably the perfect example <laughs> of that. You know, oil change, a, a, you know, a la Brian Turner, just plain silly. Had to change your oil here. Um, nice job, by the way. I like that. That's a great, great demonstration of the best way to do that. Yeah. How do you want to feel about all the uh, uh, like uh, laundry that you go through uh, and stains and having to get new clothes constantly? Uh, those were that was definitely I picked the shirt that was a throwaway shirt the one underneath because the other half of that video was me find, checking for uh, metal in the oil filter by swigging it and then blood of course coming out all over the shirt. Um, her her biggest complaint is the frequency with which I make fake blood in the house because without I, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is all right. So for anyone who hasn't seen the video yet, and you better go afterwards to do this. Uh, uh, Brian does the best job. I always taught the hard way, and and the, the, if you really want to go the old school FAA way of like checking an oil filter, you got to like you know cut it open, spread open the filter, look for metal, send it in, and whatever. No, no. You figured out how to do this by taste. Yeah, that's yeah. impressive. You can take, you swish it around and blood comes out. I like taste in something. You need to, you know, see a doctor or whatever. But this is impressive that you were able to do that. Yeah. So if you if you change your oil and you have to throw the shirt away, it's there's a problem with your engine. Yeah, that was a that was a messy one. There's a there were, that was a lot of that. And that video was really hard to make because I'm you can see I'm in an open tea hanger. People just yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so people drive by. And um, you, you just, I, I, it, it took me a while to get comfortable even just having a camera in the plane and like, no, there's a line guy over there going, what's this idiot doing? But when you're, when you're doing that, it's just, it's just like, whatever, look at me, keep going. Like, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> so I, I, people driving by when they when they saw that uh, that first one there, two, like two, did anyone see people, this as a witness? Two, yeah, two people drove by um, after I'd already had the oil in my face. And what what I kind of find weird as I'm thinking about it, if I drove by and saw this guy, I'd be like, dude, do you need help? Or just could just go, just drive away. But uh, no, yeah, two people drove by and look, and I was like, whatever, just you know. But I don't know. That guy needs help. Someone go help him. Show him how to change his oil. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's how I do it. People accused me. People looked at that photo, that video, and accused me of using chocolate syrup. I was so offended by that. That's absurd. Like that's not good for your plane anyway. Like you know, we're we're all here to to have fun and stuff like that. But I mean. Absolutely. That, that's a lot of trouble to fill your crank with, um, you know, the whole case with, with chocolate syrup just to make a video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know you're committed to your art, but... Um, yeah, if I ruin an engine, but I, I get 2,000 views on the video, it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> step one, step two. <laughs> um, here's another one of my favorites, and I want to understand this one on all sorts of levels. So about, about the time Dynon came out with their, their avionics for certified planes, my company, Brynon, came out with their, uh, their avionics for certified planes. Um, and so I've got this version, which is, I call it the all-in-one. And then I've got a thing called the Brypad, which is the much larger version of this. And they, they talk to one another. Um, and so this, this video, I'm just talking about how my avionics might be a little bit better. Um, the downside, of course, is if you hit turbulence and it shakes too much, they go completely away, so you only want to use them in smooth air. Um, but uh, these are, uh, I, I don't know where this idea came from. I know halfway through it, I'm dorking with the knob and start playing Super Mario Brothers on it. Um, <laughs> it's, it's definitely one of my one of my favorite videos, and, and, and it appears to be an extremely reliable piece of avionics, which I really like. Oh, yeah. and, and very, very flexible and includes an entertainment side of it, which is, I mean, yeah. there isn't enough entertainment in our panels, I don't think. No, not at all. It's weird processing this out loud because I make my videos and I move on. <laughs> <Just> so, like, <laughs> I'm not going to bring all, all your fun out of, your out of the closet here for oh, you. Who is you this? Remember when you did this one? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, how do you do this technically? How do you make something happen in this case? where you're superimposing a screen on that and you show all sorts of other things. You don't think these are real avionics, Jeff? Are you, you, you think okay, I'm a fraud? You think I'm a question. Fake? Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Wow. I didn't mean that. <laughs> huh. uh, I put a lot of time and money in engineering. I'm a software engineer. I wrote the program. Um, <laughs> it's, it's green tape. <laughs> so I, for everything I do, it's like I just got to make a little miniature green screen and then take a video of the altimeter and then just put it over that green screen. So there's there's one part in this video where I hold it up and there's a Tom and Jerry cartoon playing on it. Um, and you can see, it sounds so dumb um, when I talk about it. Uh, but you can see as, as I'm talking, I'm moving up and down, but the cartoon is still in place because it's in a layer, you know, behind the, the green screen. So uh, it's a lot of that. I will say this. For as silly as this is, I probably put more work into these videos than, than anybody should. Oh. It, but but I but I love it. Between now, tell me, you, you when you came up with this, you've had quite a few products. So let's talk a bit a little bit about some of those products that you actually uh, that you actually created because they're 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 fairly ingenious. You've got the uh, uh, I'm so basement. nervous. You've got the bri pad. <laughs> okay. Which you came out with, which which is pretty impressive. Oh, it's amazing. Um, do well, tell us first about the Bri Pad, how that works together with this. Uh, the Bri Pad is kind of like um, um, sort of a multifunction display. It'll display whatever is on this all-in-one. Um, it'll also run Five Flight, which is a program I invented. Which there's oh, a. I'll ask you next about Five Flight. Yep, oh, absolutely. Five Flight's fantastic. So uh, that that's really what inspired all this. Was Five Flight is a competitor to Four Flight. Um, unless they ever want to sponsor my channel, then I'll bleed that video. Um, <laughs> the idea was Five Flight does everything really that most of your. Brian? I mean, when you're at, at some point, you you I mean, you, when you're like Four Flight, when you're like Garmin, at some point you wash away the rest. So, with the things that Five Flight does, it's it, that's it, true. Maybe maybe Five Flight I could sponsor myself. Uh, it it does everything Four Flight does, but it does it has the benefit of like. There's a lot of stuff when you're flight training that's unnecessary. Like your long cross country, 
the 150 miles or whatever, you know, all that wasted. So what it does is you just go do a couple landings. It's going to send a message to your instructor showing that you did this track between these airports. That's a waste mm -hmm. of time and money sitting there in the airplane, checking off waypoints on the map. So um, it, it's got a lot of automation built into it and a lot of things that help the student. It, it removes the unnecessary cost that goes along with flight training. So, um, and it, it actually currently only runs on the bright path. So it's, it's, all, it's all the criteria. Good. I like the idea, though. It, it, it's it's pretty impressive in terms of the uh, what it does in terms. It's a very green technology if you think about mm -hmm. it, right? Because you're not burning hundred low lead across that cross country flight. You're just getting to where you need to do, and you're only doing the important parts. No, and when I was developing it, we you know we looked at some of the definitions because like when I was talking about fly, fly flight, we were looking at IFR versus marginal versus VFR, and we had what's called forgiveness altitude in there. We give you an extra 500 feet because um, we know that you're a good pilot. Um, and also, one of the things I cover in that video is how a cloud is essentially just water droplets. And you can fly through rain, VFR, that's not illegal at all. So I don't know why they don't trust you to fly through rain when it's all clumped together in a ball. So, mm. yeah, it's, a, it's, it, it's got a lot of forgiveness built into it. So we, I, I'm more on the side of trusting the aviation community because I, I think they're smarter than a lot of these other programs give them credit for. <laughs> I think that's a good point. What other uh, other things have you created along the way? I know that there's there's been quite a few. I can probably find uh, uh, this. This is one. Let me bring up one here that I was a special uh, a fan of. Um, <laughs> you, go back, you go back in time. I, I, Flight Sim's pretty cool, but but third class medical simulator. Yeah, it's a it's a Microsoft oh, product. Oh. Yeah, a lot of people don't know about it. Um, so this is, you've got the, the flight sim, um, but how do you how do you get in the flight sim if you haven't passed a simulated medical? So this thing, it, what it does is it simulates a medical, and you're probably wondering, you know, do I get a paper cut? Well, no, it, it comes with, uh, when you get your, your medical, sometimes they do um, urine tests, blood tests, and stuff like that. Uh, it came with um, some clean urine and clean blood, and when I was demonstrating it, the bag unfortunately burst open. Um, but it's basically everything you need to pass your medical before you jump right into the simulator. Got it. And and you want to elaborate on some of the items that it actually includes? Uh, there's a special contact lens in there that decodes the uh, color blindness charts for you. Um, <laughs> there's a my my favorite part is there's a little eye chart in there because you know you can get your medical you always got to read and the the very bottom smallest line just says tomato flames. <laughs> <laughs> Inside secret, uh, they all just say tomato flames at the bottom. Um, I man, I, I forget what else it had in it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it had a bag of urine, but that's that's. Well, uh, yeah, it had a bag. Of, it doesn't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew that was gonna blow up in my face? Uh, yeah, that was a that was a that was a fun one. My my wife was. I I called her and I said, "You need to stay out." She was having wine with the, the lady, and I said, "I I got a mess to clean up because that was beet juice, and beet juice stings like you wouldn't believe." Um, I mean, it was it was blood. I'm sorry. I don't know. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I'll give that away. Come on, man. Um, the other uh, video that you did that I really got a fan of. You've done a lot of things. Your plane, your plane, I will say, is a real source of nutrition and refreshment. It, it, it is. See, so tell me about tell me about this one. Yeah. So a lot of people would, would they get the carburetor ice if it gets cold out, and so you your RPMs run you know, a little bit low and you can, you know, put in your carb heat and it'll you know, go down and come back up. Um, but a lot of times people will get carb ice and they don't know it. And so what I always do, if it's, if the conditions are present after a flight, I go check, there's a sensor under most of our aircraft. You just put a glass under there and there's a little button you push and the ice just comes out. Uh, and so that's what I did there in this video. I just demonstrated uh, a feature that probably a lot of people don't know about, but you know, instructors need to be teaching this stuff. They do. They do. I think it's, uh, you know, just checking the oil level and checking for bird's nests is not really a thorough pre-flight if you're not getting rid of your carb ice. No, you want to get it out of there. That stuff will stay in there for weeks. <laughs> I love it. And um, there was another series, and I may have these two out of order, so you tell me which, uh, uh, which one we're talking you your about. Research. Oh, hey, you know, what are you going to do? I'm a fan. <laughs> How does this one start? Which one comes first? The ball or calling the ball? Calling the ball. <laughs> so uh, he's a uh, – I was doing a spoof of, I think, Iron Eagle. Um, and I, I forget how this one even came about. 
but that that so that's a, a helmet. I, I went on Facebook and I said, hey, I want to have this idea, and can I borrow? Does anyone have a fighter helmet? And this guy used to fly F-16s, and a, he had to eject in the middle of the night because his engine malfunctioned. And uh, so that helmet was actually ejected from an F-16 in the middle of the night. Um, he was he was nice enough to let me borrow it. And so the the premise was, um, I know that the video was was what happens when you bust a TFR. And as soon as I went into the TFR, we went full Iron Eagle. And so uh, I have here's the clip here where they're saying, "Call the ball, call the ball." And so I pulled out the phone and I'm like, "All right, I'm calling the ball." And then I played that clip from Top Gun where Maverick goes, "I've got the ball," and I think that yeah, no, nope, I've got the ball. So um, and then um, as I was flying in, into the TFR, I ended up flying into an embedded TFR, which is a TFR inside a TFR, and went full Inception. Uh, <laughs> And I ended up in an air show at one point and did some aerobatics in the Cirrus. The video is actually titled Aerobatics in a Cirrus. Um, but yeah, that was that one just a little bit of everything. That was one of my favorite ones to make because it's just six videos in one, so many moving parts. And as I was flying back to my airport, my friend Christy Wong, who's a local instructor out here, was flying. I just heard her on the radio. And then so I, I put like, I showed like bogeys inbound on the radar and I put like five, Three or five one whiskey warrior, whatever her plane was in there, and she was trying to race me and stuff. So that that ended up getting in the, the video as well. It's kind of fun. <laughs> um, so some of the videos you've done have caused a little bit of controversy, maybe. Oh, look at the time! God, is it an hour already? <laughs> yeah, I mean these things when you're on them, they go by so fast. I know it's amazing, and I'm not gonna let you go. So <laughs> here we are. Uh, no, I stand by this. Um, <laughs> the only mistake in this video is if you're paying attention, the shadow of my legs is not complete. Um, and I suppose if I'd done this for real for the rest of my life, the shadow of my legs would not be complete. Um, yeah, I, I was first getting into video editing and I was like, you know, it'd be really cool. Uh, what if I just clean the propeller while it's running? Um, and so... Yeah, I never know which way to play this, like if I should play it up like it's real. Um, what you can't see is I'm actually hunched down inside the plane, and what you also can't see is the repeller spinning uh, in this video. And so uh, I just thought, this is a little 10-second video, and uh, I put it I put it out there. Where I'm just running the plane, and I've got a camera on the wing, obviously. And then I went out and polished the spinner, and then I, I merged the, the two clips together. It ended up on OSHA's Facebook page. <laughs> like, <there's, laughs> There's a, it, it gets shared around every once in a while. Um, and, and the most recent comment is a guy who just lit me up um, telling me how irresponsible it was. Um, and that that's, I, I don't know how to feel about it. I kind of don't have a ton of sympathy for people who don't get that that's not real. Like no one's going to do that. Like, you, of course it's a, a joke. And the channel's called Just Plain Silly. And, and it's, everything's a joke. So people, people come in there and like, you're going to get in trouble for this or that. And I'm like, I wouldn't even airborne like all these things. It's like, this is like, there's so many people out there for better, or for worse, who either don't have the sense of humor or they can't pick up on it. And, and so I've ended up in some interesting places. <laughs> yeah. That's uh that's an understatement. You yeah. also had a, another one maybe on Facebook, not that long ago, having to do with taking a written exam. Yeah, so twice now. I, so I, the both times I've gotten to meet people at the FAA. <laughs> <laughs> Got, gotten to meet people at the FAA. If you if you ever want to meet those guys, I can I can get you. There's some people who are like trying to get the FAA to respond to them. Like I can tell you how to do it. <laughs> uh, I, I know the secret handshake to to getting a meeting with them personally. Uh, first time I visited them, and. Um, I don't know. I've been in the North Texas Aviators Facebook group for a long time. Uh, people know me there. And someone said, hey, I'm looking for an instructor. And I was like, hey, I'm your guy. Someone took a screenshot. Well, I said, I'm your guy, and I only accept cash because I don't want to pay taxes on it. I mess that a lot. Uh, and they, someone took a screenshot of it and turned me into the, the FISDO, Flight Standards District Office. Um, and uh, so they brought me in and made me bring – it's funny when this happens. So – it, really? For people who are watching, people get, uh, they talk about getting rank checked or meeting the FISDO. Don't bring your license. Don't bring your logbook. Don't talk to 
these people are not out to get you. These people are out to make sure you didn't screw up, and if you did, make sure you understand why you did so you can apply again. There's so much internet rhetoric about how bad the FAA or the whoever is. Like these guys brought me in. They're pilots. The, the guys I was talking to, one was a helicopter pilot, one was a private pilot. He said, we just want to make sure um, that you're not actually signing people's logbooks. Um, I said, you know, of course I'm not. And he goes, we understand it's a joke. He never laughed. And there, I kept trying. Um, I asked him, I go, if I had said I need to reschedule this meeting because I got a student tomorrow, would that be a problem? And I kept hoping he'd crack a smile. And they're like, they're not. <laughs> so, uh, but what was really cool about the first visit was I said, do you guys mind if I take some time and just interview you? Because I want to know if you'll take my license here or in a rant check. And he said, that's absurd. Why would he's like, there's no reason for us to take it. Like, if we don't want you to fly, that plastic has nothing to do with it. Um, he said, I can't take your logbook. And, and, you know, he's like, we're, we're really not here to try to get you out of flying. He's, he says, that's, I don't know where it's coming from, but he said, my job is just to make sure that if you're not flying safely, you know why, and we can get you back flying safely. He said, in, I want to say nine years of doing it, he had only ever suspended somebody's license for 90 days once. And it was something fairly egregious. He didn't tell me what, but, um, so that was, a that was time first, number one. The first time. That was the first time. <laughs> the second time, I probably the the word deserve is strong. So I was going to take my written exam for the instrument, and um, I thought, man, it'd be funny to ask Facebook for the the answers to the test question. The, the, the test, this, the it wasn't even open. Like this was my test was at like eleven o'clock. This was seven eight o'clock in the morning. They they didn't open until you know nine or ten. And so I posted like, hey guys, I'm having trouble with this question. Can anyone help me out? Well, that, that was not the right thing to do. Um, <laughs> and I tagged them in the post, which was really <laughs> not the right thing to do. And I've I've come to terms with it. Like I was mad at first because they they knew that that I wasn't there. They they weren't open. They they turned me in for cheating. And they didn't have. I mean, they knew I didn't cheat, but they turned me in. So I was I was like mad. Like this is federal thing and it, it's in the far as like reporting people falsely and then I you know if I was running a business and someone did that I would probably go hey dude that's not funny knock it off and in which case I would be like yeah you're right that was too far but um, I understand you know they got a business to run and they if if the FAA thinks someone's cheating they probably have to shut them down and investigate so I, I'm not uh, I'm not upset about it at all and I realize I took the joke at least a little bit too. It's still funny. I think it's funny. Um, I'll always think it's funny. But next time, when you do, when you go do this, don't tag, don't tag, this. <laughs> don't tag know. anyone who's associated with the federal authorities. <laughs> but, well, I, I mean, but ultimately, from from all the stuff you do, you have to have a, a understanding of who yeah. you're dealing with and what the message actually is, what you're actually trying to do. Yeah, and, and I will tell you this, the FAA, the second time they didn't even call me in, this guy just called me and he just, he, I like, I pick up the phone and he's laughing and he goes, it's your local fizz though, Brian. And I was like, oh boy, what are you now? And he goes, this is a joke. He goes, we're just going to send it to Oklahoma and sign it off and you'll be fine. Because they barred me from taking tests with the FAA during that time. So I couldn't, I couldn't take it. Um, but he, he was like, he goes, we've been laughing about this all morning. This is so obviously a joke. And he, he goes, we understand why they turned you in, but. We think it's funny, but that doesn't mean you're not going to get in trouble for this stuff. But he said, don't, don't worry about it. And you know, a couple of days later, everything was, you know, wiped clean or whatever. But the, the FAA, every time, they have no reason to be nice to me. I'm a pain, like they're having to do paperwork. They're, they're <laughs> genuinely, for the two experiences I've had, they have been nothing but pleasant to deal with, very positive experiences. And both times I, I said, can I, can I take some time and talk to you about what you do and don't do? And they're like, absolutely. Um, I've tried to get them to come on my channel and they won't do that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> they're smarter than that they knew someone's going to turn them in for something yeah uh, exactly it, that's bad for the gold watch at the <laughs> without a doubt I, I i do know what you mean i mean it's always tough when you're dealing with a large audience you're always going to find someone who uh who either it, 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 it takes exception with something that you're doing i mean i'll show a quick picture right now we when when the pandemic started we came out with this image that we were trying to, to kind of encourage people to keep flying. The message was keep flying, but you can use this at your local chapter, your local airport, your local whatever, you know, of a nice way to, to keep people together, keep them flying. And we got at least one or a couple of people that got extremely upset, basically saying that we were encouraging people to be too close to running propellers. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Who? Like, who 
who's going to read that and be like, okay, I'll go stand next to this one. Clear? Nope. I'm, I'm committed. <laughs> well, they, obviously the two people weren't, weren't holding hands, right? They weren't going across to either side. We did uh, diversify it later on and make sure that we were representing, you know, er, er, everyone from every walk of life and, and try to keep it as good as possible. But uh, in the end of the day, they thought it was pretty risky that uh, we were really showing something that could be, could be, uh, could be pretty dangerous. But at the end of the day, I was thinking, mm, still, it's another propeller running. And that was what we were, our goal was in the very beginning. So Yeah. Well, and there's the temp you know, temptation to just double down and like put a little blood on the tip. <laughs> <laughs> Into the mind of Brian Turner. And, and with all oh. of that, for the Rue Your Fizdo visits, this one is something that I absolutely love. So it's funny. This is now my business card. I'm not, I'm not even kidding about that. Um, so I went to go be on, I'm good friends with this guy, Daniel Milliken and, and Christy, they have a, a channel called Taking Off and he does this fantastic show. He, he invited a group of YouTubers to talk about whatever. And he asked me to talk about this. And so just as a spoof, I like to have some kind of site gag. And so I told him, I said, now I'm a member of the frequent FISDO, uh, whatever I, I said, I said on the 10th punch, I, it's just a pass or I get a sandwich or something. And I got a pretty good laugh. And so I said, you know what? I'm just going to make this my actual business card. So these are my business cards now. I, when people ask me for a business card at Sun and Fun Osh Couch, wherever I go, I'll, I'll, I hand these out. So uh, that's a – and it, oh, credit, credit where credit's due. That was my wife's idea. Every once in a while, she's like, you know, it would be funny if you had a punch card. And I was like, I'm, I've am i got to do that now. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> Did you ever bring it into the Fisto? Oh, no, because I didn't have them at the time. Next time I go, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Bring your own punch, go to the front desk, really blow their mind. Whoever it is who checks you in, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Be like, here's the punch. I, I don't know if I can do this. I'm not sure I'm allowed to do this. Here's the hard thing. It's, it's tempting to poke the bear a little bit. Like, I have this idea. I really want to get a camera and mount it on my nose wheel pants so it's right out front, 120 frames per second, so I can slow it down and just go do some low passes, the low approaches over some of the different airports I fly at and then upload the video, but first superimpose drone rotors on the side of it. Just, and I want to make the video 10 minutes long and the last 30 seconds. I want you to do it, but don't do it. <laughs> but, and I, but the last 30 seconds just show how I superimposed the rotors on there and this was a camera on my plane because no one's going to watch until the end and someone will get bent out of shape. And there's part of me that thinks that's funny, but there's another part of me that never really didn't like Andy Kaufman and all his, uh, inside stuff that put other people out, but I'm, I'm probably going to do it because I lack the self-control. <laughs> so, so. I love that. <laughs> but I guess if you show each time, you know, I noticed that when you did one of your, th there was, there've been a couple videos. It's a double-edged sword. Let me say you, you did a couple videos where it, uh, it looked like you were doing something, um, let's say not in the regulations and you made very clear by the end of the video, you showed how the sausage was made and what was going on to make sure that you were clear in doing that. And on one hand, it, it, it gets you off the hook. <laughs> on the other hand, it shows yeah. you know, the other side. And I, the, the people who subscribe to my channel, because I, I, I have the Patreon thing, um, and I, I, I pitch a lot of things to, to those folks and say, hey, I'm doing this. And they're like, Never ever let anyone in. You gotta just take it to the grave. Like it was not chocolate syrup. It was oil. You know, it's a drone. Don't show. They like because I talked to them about the video. Like you cannot put the how it was made video. Like you can't do. You need to like ride. And I was like, but I, I, and they're the I, same I people that will hear. hold signs outside of the prison for your release. They will be there. You will be able to see them through the bars. They'll stand by you. But my, my favorite thing is at the end of the day, I've done nothing wrong. And that's what the fizz though. They're like, you haven't broken any regs, so there's nothing we can do. And I was like, right? <laughs> exactly. And, and the other thing is, if I wasn't a pilot, I could do this all day long with no recourse like at all. Like, Exactly. It's, it's because you're a pilot that there's this other entity that's like, oh, I should be scared of them or whatever. But at the end of the day, I mean, I, if I've ever broken regulations, I, I'm sure to make sure the cameras aren't rolling when I do it. <laughs> yeah, well, it... it it's, it is unfortunate that in, in the world that we're in right now that um, anything that you put out there on YouTube, we've had it on our videos. Other people, of course, have, have had it. Some people have had other reper repercussions. There's always going to be someone when they see something that they think they could interpret as being breaking the FARs that um, will research it, 
We'll yeah. turn you in. We'll look at your your track. We'll find. We've we've had that happen. Have you really? Yes, absolutely. And we were able to easily show. Nope. Look at the altimeter. Look at this in the same shot. Not true. But unfortunately, um, you know. Yeah, I I have a video that I haven't uploaded, and I don't know if I'm going to upload it because it's an entire video showing how I'm sitting on the ground doing something but it looks like I'm flying. I've got clouds going by me. Like it's, it's how, how I can, cause I, I can't do a lot of the stuff in the sky. I gotta fly a plane. I mean, there's some stuff that would just be stupid to be that distracted. And so I'll film things on the ground where I've got the camera angle looking up just enough that it can't see fences, buildings, whatever. And then I, it's rotoscoping or whatever you want to call it to get those windows out of there. And then I'll take a GoPro that was sitting on that window and I put that footage there, superimpose the, the noise of the engine running and now I'm flying. Um, yeah, but, except, Except no, we don't want you to take away the the uh, suspension of disbelief that we all that that we all love about your channel. Or maybe I just made that up just now so I can go exactly. do whatever I want. <laughs> maybe instead, I want to see the next video of you sitting there on the phone watching YouTube videos with Fizdo, going, "Okay, okay, hold on a second. Now uh, go to www. Whatever yeah. uh, frame twenty three dot six. Do you see that guy?" That guy's definitely, too, okay, that guy's too low. And just hold him on the phone. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, the next video is going to be just 30 minutes of me in the sky watching TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> in the clouds, <laughs> inverted. <laughs> so, um, all right, I got to show some more. One of my favorite videos that you ever did um, was one where you got, you wrote a letter to Cirrus and, and you got an answer back, oh, which is yeah. impressive, right? Big company. Fantastic planes, all the stuff we've had. Uh, uh, Dale Clapire here on the show. Impressive, everything that they did. You got a letter back from them about your ideas. Yeah. And uh, I want to go through some of those right now to show people some of your ideas. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a lot of people who don't like Sears because there's just people who like high wing planes. I don't know why. I don't. Um, but um, so I thought uh, I was pitching ideas to Sears and saying, you guys should consider some different models. And so I, I this is my concept. Um, I drew this freehand uh, and uh, submitted it to them. Um, I don't know if they're going to, I don't know uh, any of these that you're going to show. I don't know if they're going to adopt, but I assume at some point they will because they're all very good ideas. <laughs> he said, well, two laughing. years, right? Since, since Air Venture, we haven't actually seen a Sears display. So you really don't know what they're going to unveil. I know. I know. You'll see it. You'll see it. <laughs> I love it. And this, you said, uh, part of the problem, of course, you know, because they can see on downwind or something like that or turn to base. Yeah, you, yeah. So a lot of people don't like to see that runway when they're turning base. And so this, this uh, for those group of people who are scared of seeing a runway at that angle, this solves that for them. <laughs> oh, yeah. So people are scared to stall the Cirrus. <laughs> like, there's, I had a guy once tell me, he's like, don't stall that thing. It, it won't recover. And so I was very concerned that Sirius is making a, a plane with such terrible stall characteristics. So I would pitch this, uh, the T-tail version, because, uh, you know, the, uh, was it the Beach Skipper was designed to teach people spin recovery. And so I, I'm saying Sirius is, you know, people are scared of the spin of the Sirius. Like, make a plane designed to let your pilots know they can get in a spin and get out of a spin. Um, I, they, they probably may not make the plane, but that, that tagline at the bottom will probably show up somewhere. It'll just SSC, you leave it a little subtle. There you go. Oh, they have to make this. You have to make a twin because this way, you know, most people complain about the Sirius and the cost to repack the chute. Well, this twin that I pitched to them doesn't have a chute because you got the second engine. So this wow. is a no brainer. Yeah. No I couldn't brainer. tell if it had a third engine. So I was just trying to make sure that you weren't trying to compete with the tri motor. Um, I'm not the best at Photoshop. I mean, this uh, CAD drawing that I made uh, sometimes it gets sloppy. <laughs> it's impressive. I like it. Oh, that so there are a lot of people out there who do I don't want a high wing, do I want a low wing? You you get these are I call them the bi carriage files. They want to know what's like to fly a biplane, but they also want the safety of the chute and they want the carbon and everything. So this solves that problem. I think there's a huge untapped market for composite biplanes, uh high performance <laughs> with with parachutes. I'm not sure what happens to the top wings when the doors open, but something cool. <laughs> you're also dry you're dry in the rain that's another great benefit right yeah all the yeah. Cessna guys they always talk about that you can get out in the rain mm -hmm. and in Oshkosh you can camp under the wing but you don't have to be laying on the ground it solves so many problems it's so practical they have to make it well, this is because uh, tailwheel pilots exist um, 
because they'll, they'll, tailwheel they'll, pillars exist. Yeah, and they'll use they'll use the tailwheel to justify hating any plane out there, and so um, they're very vocal. Um, especially if you fly a Cirrus, they're very vocal. So uh, what I thought was, um, I can't imagine a tailwheel pilot not wanting to just jump into this thing <laughs> and go ground loop it a couple of times or whatever it is they do in their planes. It's a castering tailwheel too. Um, I like. I want every uh, Cirrus to have castering tail and possibly main wheels as well. I would like all the wheels to be castering like on a shopping cart. Just <laughs> push it however you want. You can slip on the runway. <laughs> You put it any way, do it any way you want. It's easy to handle in the hangar. You got a good point. Yeah, sure. No, this is this is a brilliant idea. And then where, what other tailwheel with a with a wheel pan is out there? Only Cirrus can do that. No, I I agree. You know, maybe a couple of Reno planes. That's about it. But this looks like a contender anyway. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's very 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 fast. So the stall pilots, I feel, get left in <laughs> the. Uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out if if Trent Palmer. If if uh, Mike Payne, if these guys were gonna, well they they those latter two do fly serious, but these these guys um, get get left out here. And so what I wanted was I wanted them to have the safety of of the recovery chute. And we we still have the the patented uh, wheel pans and tail wheel on this one, but the big tires. So um, you could land this plane anywhere without having to use uh, caps. So I can land my Cirrus anywhere on time. I like, the, I like that you left the wheel pants on it. You know, we don't see enough Alaskan bush wheels with wheel pants. And I don't know why. I, I don't know why. Uh, their wheels are always getting dirty and stuff, and so I say keep them clean. It's way more aerodynamic. Um, but I, I feel like this is a no-brainer, too. Um, yeah, I, don't, I, there's not, I can't think of anything wrong with this at all. <laughs> and that, that may or may not be in the, in the pilot seat uh, Maverick from Top Gun. <laughs> in the opening scene of the film. <laughs> okay so um there's an, another untapped market uh, this is a <laughs> really a lot, is it a lot of people the so the series is very fast and that makes people nervous soccer moms a lot of folks don't like to go too fast in a plane and so this is um what i proposed it was going to be called uh, it's the serious dirigible i call it the syringible uh, i was going to call it the serious blimp the simp uh, which would be the uh serious inflatable motorized Sorry, some jokes just need to die on the vine. Um, but this would be uh, this would be for those people who are more of like wanting to just observe the environment and not be rushing past it. Um, and I don't think this would need a parachute because I I don't know how blimps work, but I, I can't imagine they go fast enough to harm anybody. <laughs> it's definitely one that I love. So I mean, you know, again, just to bring things back, a reminder: this is a tiny, tiny taste of everything that you can see over on YouTube on Brian's channel, Just Plain Silly. So you have you definitely ought to check that out. And then, so Brian, what's next? I know that we're, we're gonna try to do a couple things that are, we're, we won't be telling people too much about, but um, no, but but maybe we'll find a way to, to steal the show over at uh, Air Venture or uh, cause some trouble one way or another. Um, yeah, so uh, for those watching, uh, we've been talking and uh, we, we think very similarly. And uh, I, I I, I think we have plans. That's all I'll say. Um, on my channel, the next the next video that's coming out on Sunday um, morning uh, is about how to communicate on the radio. But it's not about you know all these people spend all this time learning how to use the radio and talk right. That's not what's important. What's important are the phrases that get you through flying. Unable, uh, you were stepped on. Unclear. Uh, sorry, I was on the landline. So I'm going to cover all the phrases you as a pilot can use on the radio. Did you know if, if the I'm, – I'm, I'm studying my instrument rating, and getting clearances copied down is terribly complex. So what I started doing is as soon as they gave me my clearance, I just cancel the IFR on the ground. Um, then I don't have to copy it. Um, and then so – but there's a trick. After you do that, it's just 7600 on the squawk and just go. There's oh, like, I like that. Yeah. So I'm basically teaching – it's kind of the Cliff's Notes version of, of what you're really going to do on the radio and how to do it. Um, and I actually, in the video, I bust Bravo to show you how you negotiate uh, that situation. Um, so I, I, the thing is, for my craft, I really do put myself in harm's way a lot. Um, so that's that's coming out this week. I love next, that. Yeah, next next week, I'm showing off an invention I came up with. Jeff, have you ever been flying uh, and you go to the airport and you don't know way, which way the wind's going and you don't want to say wind check because everyone thinks you're dumb? So you, you fly over and you try to find that windsock, but you, you don't know. So I've invented a windsock that attaches to your wing. 
um, mm -hmm. which ensures you're always landing into the wind. You don't have to fly over over any every landing, crosswind, straight wind. That wind sock, you're, you're always landing right into it. So um, that's um, that should be either next week or the following week. So that's an invention that's going to save lives or, or kill, pe kill people landing. Oh, no, question. no, that's fantastic. I like that. That, yeah. that goes right up there with telling ATC, you know, unable and you're on the landline. That is key. Hey, if it's good for the tower, it's good for the pilots. <laughs> I hate to tell you, but I'm pretty sure that, that uh, that's actually true, that you can use the same phrases they use. I really like it. Yeah, and, and then a real video, no, no kidding, in, in two weeks, I'm actually going to go paramotoring. I've never done that before. I've always wanted to, so I've got to, I'm going to go do that as soon as the weather allows it. That is something I've wanted to do, and I've started watching this uh, Tucker Gott on YouTube and looks like an absolute blast. And I'm, I'm afraid that I'm gonna go try it and start looking at getting one. Cause it, if, if it's as fun as it looks, I mean, it, it just looks like a blast. Yeah, and the shoot's open all the time. You can't complain about that. Right? Every nearest <laughs> pilot should like that. Yeah, anything that's got a parachute, I'm in. Let's go parasailing. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I don't want to, to lose out or run out of time without also talking about your other ventures that you've done, and some of them are are just awesome. And the first one out there is Metar AF, M E T A R A F dot com. So make sure everyone sees that M E T A R A F dot com. Yeah. Tell everybody what this is. So, uh, some of you uh, juvenile-minded people may be aware of a weather app called What the Forecast. Um, I was on some group talking to people and someone goes, wouldn't it be great if we had a what the forecast for, for pilots? And I was like, oh, I can build that. Because all, all that data that the, the FAA puts out there, you can use these APIs and you, you know this, and you get that data out of there. And so I wrote a program um, that basically it takes the legitimate METAR for the airport you're looking at. And as of last week, it's now worldwide. Um, and it, will, it, it it's just snarky. It just says, uh, you know what, it's VFR out, but people are gonna be able to see your crappy landing three towns away. Um, or like it just it takes the real METAR and gives you the real METAR, but just wraps it in the most PG-13 maybe R-rated snark that I could possibly come up with. And, and I wrote a tool so anytime I think of something, I can say, okay, snow, this is it's going to be hot and then it's going to be cold because they're going to crash. <laughs> it's snowing, but that's okay. It'll put the fire out. Or it's really mean of you to drag the first responders out on a day that this cold. It's really hateful. <laughs> um, so it's a little bit out of my I try to remain especially with my channel because a lot of kids watch it so that's that's the only thing where I'm like it's a little bit not for that crowd um, there's you know, swear words and stuff in there but it's um, when I'm with my friends that's how we talk so I like it I like it and then you have one that's just plain instead of silly useful and that is preflightdata.com yeah this is a great thing so I, I don't know how many people still fly with paper I fly with paper um, and I found, do you, okay, so I, I, I found before a flight, I'm going to Foreflight, I'm going to Sky Vector, I'm going these places, and I'm, I'm, I'm writing down all this information on a piece of paper before every flight, and I don't like to do anything twice if it takes a long time. As a former software engineer, like, efficiency is my, my goal. Uh, and so I, I said, there's got to be a way. I know this data is out there. I could pull all this data from the FAA. They publish it every 28 days or whatever it is. And so I wrote a program for me. Where and I put it on a, on a website so I could use it anywhere. And all I do is put in my airport I'm leaving and where I'm going to, and then I choose if it's a return trip or if there's six or seven airports along the way. And as a VFR pilot, it gives me all the information I need that when I get flight following, they're going to say what's your altitude, what's your on course heading, all the radio frequencies. It actually does print out the METAR at the time that you, you print it um, and gives you space to write everything. So it's everything as a VFR pilot I need. Well, I would just say I'm going from DTO to ATM, hit submit, and it prints a knee board that fits on my little, you know, King School's knee board. Um, and I, I, I use it all the time because I, I do like to fly with paper. I, I write notes as I go. So um, it's, it's preflightdata.com. It's free. Um, that one, unfortunately, is only U.S. because all the other countries charge for that data. Um, but the FAA puts it out for free. So, That's awesome. I, I absolutely love it. So, again, for everybody... The channel is Just Plain Silly on YouTube, metaraf.com and preflightdata.com. And if you want some more information, of course, all you need to do is type in anywhere, search with one without any spaces, worldsgreatestpilot.com. I'm doing the URL. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, Brian, thank you so, so much for joining us here on Social Flight Live tonight. It has been wonderful, and, and I really appreciate all of the work that you do to put some smiles on some faces of everybody and brighten up their days. It's something that we've always needed and help support general aviation. Well, thank you very much for having me. This is, I, I feel privileged that this has gotten me here. Like, this is what, you know, if you say, what's the one thing that the channel is doing for me? Like, I'm not making money off of it, you know, but getting to, to meet people and engage with people and, and talk to people and go to events and stuff like that is so cool. It's so cool to be sitting here talking to you right now on, on your channel. Like, this, for, for me, this is what it's about. One day, maybe, I don't know, but right right now, just, got to meet these guys like these these all these people. It's, like, it's just it's it's such a treat and so I, I can't thank you enough for having me on so this is this has all all been awesome absolutely and thanks to everyone for taking time out of their evening to join us here on social flight live and again you want to tune in get social flight live uh, com. make sure you go to the social flight.com website and social flight mobile app all of that gets you all the things we've been talking about. And we want to give away these prizes. We want to see you for future shows. Next week on April 6th at 8 p.m., as always, we are going to be behind the scenes at EAA's museum, which people haven't been able to visit in person. We're going to get behind the scenes there with EAA's Chris Henry. Hear some of the stories, see some of the things you don't get to normally see having to do with that. On April 13th, it's sun and fun week, and so we will be off. There will be no Social Flight Live show that week. However, we're going to tape a live broadcast there at the show on the same day and upload it so that you can see it and take you right down on the grounds to see what it's like if you're not able to make it there in person. And then we come back and it's owner maintenance night. We're gonna talk about all the different ways and things that you can do on your aircraft, ways to do it, give you some tips, uh, uh, all sorts of things, hopefully not involving some of the things you may see on Brian's channel of just plain silly. Um, <laughs> don't want any hot oil on anybody, you don't want any drinking any oil, don't want anything hydraulic fluid in your face. Um, but we will be teaching you all sorts of cool things, and uh, I am planning to be there alongside of my son, Jake Simon, who is uh, getting his AMP that week or testing for it, so it should be a lot of fun uh, to do that. Again, Brian, thank you so, so much for taking time to join us this evening. Well, thank you for having me. This was awesome. All right, and to everyone out there again, I wish you all blue skies. Thank you.